Now, in an actual production environment, our tables could have millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of rows. And so it would never make sense to just perform a query like this where we just dump everything because then all of a sudden we're asking our database to send back 100 million rows. And that's just unacceptable. And our software that we're using to even send the query may not even be able to handle that. And so usually you want to provide a limit of some kind. So you may want to say, hey, I want to grab, uh, you know, the first 10 rows that match this criteria. Well, we can do that by using the limit keyword. So we say limit and then pass in the number of rows that you want. So if I run that, you can see that we get 10 rows. If I lower this to five, we can get this, uh, we can get five rows. And you can chain this on to any SQL expression. So let's say I wanted to grab all of the products that have a price of greater than 10. Right, if I search that, you can see I get 10 results. And let's say I want to limit this to only the first two results. So if I hit that, you can see that now I get two results. So uh, all the keywords that we're covering, uh, including the order by uh, and any of the filter expressions, we can just keep chaining on to our SQL statement to further specify exactly the data that we want. Now with limit, there's another keyword that I want to cover. Uh, and so let's say that I want to grab all products and I want to order by ID. All right, so this is going to return it like it normally does, and it's ordered by ID. And let's say I want to set the limit to be five. So now we get um, products with an ID of one, two, three, five, and seven. Do I not have an ID of six? I'm just curious, actually. So let me cut this out for a second. I just want to see if there's an ID of six. There isn't. Okay, so that's, that's expected. So let me add that back. So we'll say... So I'll do order by ID, and then we'll limit it to five. So we have the first five. Now let's say that we want to skip a certain number of rows, because every time we search this, we're going to get the same result. And let's say that we don't actually care about the first two results, and I want to skip past them. We can provide an offset. So I'll do offset two. And so what that's going to do is it's going to skip past these two first two results and then give us the next five. So we should see the first result be remote then microphone, then car, and then the two after that come after that. So if I search this, we can see that that first one is a remote and the last one is the pencil sharpener. And then if I do an offset of, um, you know, five, it's going to skip the first original five. And so then we get pencil, pencil sharpener, and keyboard. So you're going to see that, you know, when it comes to limit and offset, these are going to come in handy when we start implementing pagination in our API. We're going to definitely make use of the limit and offset keywords.